so much for being here. Uh, part of our program's uh, theme tonight is, well, the Center of Fiction has us pair pieces with a book. And the book we are working with tonight is The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. And part of the interest in doing this book is that it is such a difficult book. It's such a controversial book. There's so much to dig into about it. And it raises a lot of questions about who is the other, and whose voices do we hear, and whose stories get told, and whose stories don't get told. And we have a really um, wonderfully vibrant conversation about that in literature. And I don't think it's always as well known that we have just as vital a conversation about that in music and whose pieces we're playing and why and when and how. How these are these stories getting told? How are these different musics being represented and by whom? And so uh, we paired these pieces today with readings from Heart of Darkness. Um, and we put a lot of care and thought into our pairings, and we'd love to talk with you more about it afterwards. Uh, there's, I believe, a reception upstairs. Um, so we'd be thrilled, or back there, back there, never mind. Um, and we'd be thrilled to talk with you more about it. So without further ado, we will be starting with Sariaho's Ariel Hale with Brandon on flute and Megan Metzos. I had my shoulders against the wreck of my steamer, hauled up on the slope like a carcass of some big river animal. The smell of mud, of primeval mud by Jove, was in my nostrils. The high stillness of primeval forest was before my eyes. There were shiny patches on the black creek. The moon had spread over everything a thin layer of silver, over the rank grass over the mud, upon the wall of matted vegetation standing higher than the wall of a temple. Over the great river I could see through a somber gap glittering, glittering, as it flowed broadly by without a murmur. All this was great, expectant, mute, while the man jabbered about himself. I wondered whether the stillness on the face of the immensity looking at us two were meant as an appeal or as a menace. What were we who had strayed in here? Could we handle that dumb thing, or would it handle us? I felt how big, how confoundedly big, was that thing that couldn't talk and perhaps was deaf as well. What was in there?
going up that river was like traveling back to the earliest beginnings of the world, when vegetation rioted on the earth and the big trees were kings. An empty stream, a great silence, an impenetrable forest. The air was warm, thick, heavy, sluggish. There was no joy in the brilliance of the sunshine. The long stretches of the waterway ran on, deserted into the gloom of overshadowed distances. On silvery sandbanks, hippos and alligators sunned themselves side by side. The broadening waters flowed through a mob of wooded islands. You lost your way on that river as you would in a desert, and butted along all day against shoals trying to find the channel, till you thought yourself bewitched and cut off forever from everything you had known once, somewhere far away, in another existence, perhaps. There were moments when one's past came back to one, as it will sometimes when you have not a moment to spare to yourself. But it came in the shape of an unrestful and noisy dream, remembered with wonder against the overwhelming realities of this strange world of plants and water and silence. And this stillness of life did not in the least resemble a peace. It was the stillness of an implacable force brooding over an inscrutable intention. Thank you.
were dying slowly, it was very clear. They were not enemies, they were not criminals, they were nothing earthly now. Nothing but black shadows of disease and starvation, lying confusedly in the greenish gloom, brought from all the recesses of the coast and all the legality of time contracts, lost in uncongenial surroundings, fed on unfamiliar food, they sickened, became inefficient, and were then allowed to crawl away and rest. These moribund shapes were free as air and nearly as thin. I began to distinguish the gleam of the eyes under the trees, then glancing down, I saw a face near my hand. The black bones reclined at full length with one shoulder against the tree, and slowly the eyelids rose, and the sunken eyes looked up at me, enormous and vacant, a kind of blind white flicker in the depths of the orbs, which died out slowly. I wanted to do a quick translation, as this one is in German. This Rilke text reads, Little moths stagger, quivering out of the hedge. They will die tonight and never know that it wasn't spring. Come and find out. 